It's Don here from the board. Thanks for coming along and checking out this video. Today in this video, I'm going to be looking at a artisan review. More specifically, the big kid, Mount Fuji. Now, this was sent to me for review by Mitenole as part of a fan box of stuff. Uh, some things I get to keep, some things I get to review and send back. And unfortunately, or maybe fortunately, this is one of them. So let's get cracking right into it. Now, I did see this. It was listed on Mastrop, but uh, I didn't really feel like it was necessarily worth the cost that they were asking. Now, it might be, it might not be. I'm, I'm not here to, to really speculate on that because obviously artisan being art is entirely up to you on what you believe it's worth and how much you're willing to pay for it. So going to put the price aside from that even though I believe uh, Mutanale's letter from that box actually said that it was $60. Now you're going to have to excuse the, the background noise that's happening. That is actually the council street sweeper going on by. But while that's happening, let us check out the actual details from the listing. So this is the mass drop listing itself. The big kid Mount Fuji wood and resin artisan keycap. So it's meant to be either SA or OEM profile. It has a really lovely side look. Clearish resin with some whitish swirls. I suppose it's kind of like the winter snow blowing through. It's meant to be wood embedded. So you should be able to see some wood grain on that, hopefully. And of course, you know, it looks, it looks quite nice in artistic photos. What else is there to say? It's meant to be a height of 17 millimeters and compatible with MX Cherry switches and clones. So that's all there is really to say about it. Let's have a look at if it meets our expectations. Noting that these are reference images and of course they would have been taken in a studio with really great lighting as opposed to ordinary lighting from a room like where I'm sitting right now. Okay, off goes the monitor. On goes the desktop. There we go. So, by the way, I never went to Chifley College. Um, it's just a rule that I got as part of uh, my studies because I visited the college since I had done some secondary education training. <laughs> so in case anyone's wondering that if I went to Chifley, no, I didn't go to Chifley. Okay, so here's the box that it came in. I did open it already, and so I already had a quick kind of look at it. There it is in the SA profile. It's pretty sort of unassuming, just like that. Now I do have scales here, so we can check out how it weighs against other keycaps. Now I do know that SA keycaps do weigh a little bit more, simply because they are bigger and they have more plastic in them. Uh, I'm just seeing if I've got some SA's row ones nearby. You'd, you'd think that after doing videos for two years, I would actually be way more prepared, um, but you would, you'd probably be wrong. So they're all row threes. I've got, I've got keycaps everywhere, man. Like I kid you not, there are just keycaps everywhere. Okay. Is that a row one? I don't think any of those are row ones. All right, we're just going to pretend that I had a row one and, and I was able to compare it because I don't, but we're just going to check out the weight anyway. Right, so it's teared at zero. You can't really see that very well, but the reflection is not, not helping. I'm going to tear that at zero again. And it weighs 3.7 grams. 3.7 grams. Let's just take that off. And I do have a random row three here and it weighs 2.0. Now I think the row one weighs a little bit more, but definitely not at three point something. So you are getting a bit of extra weight. Um, and of course I'm still poking around in my random bits and pieces here as if I have a row one, but I'll, it's a little bit heavier, not, not terribly, terribly much. 
Now let's put this on a white background and lift it and see if we can get some focal action happening here. It's probably one of the hardest parts with a webcam setup that I have. Oh, there we go. Okay, so it's got a nice glossy surface. From the top down view, you don't see very much. It's a bit of a white sort of paint blob. Yep, you're definitely getting some of those white swirls that's meant to look like snow, snow blowing through and things like that. It's not terribly, terribly exciting from that front view. Now if I flip it over to the side view, aha. Okay, there we go. So, does that meet our expectations? Well, it kind of does. I'm going to try and get that to focus as best. There we go. Okay. So we do have a peak. Uh, it's not a super duper fantastic looking peak. It's certainly not as detailed or as painted with that ratio of snow. The, the height of that peak also looks a bit funny too. So try and try and keep that in mind that I've got this in the same orientation as the picture. So I'm going to expect that the height the drop-off height of Mount Fuji is going to match the, the actual visual profile of what is in the picture that I'm going to switch over and look at, okay? So, so just try and memorize what it kind of looks like, and I'm trying to be fair and, and line it up so it is perfectly side on. Okay, that's what it looks like in this keycap. My arm's getting tired. <laughs> and that's what it looks like on their reference picture. So, the beef that I have right now is this height, this curve, is not the same curve. This backward feature and drop-off is not the same backwards feature and drop-off. Um, what's with that? It, it does not look like it was made with necessarily the same mold. Like, I don't know how they were producing this keycap. Now, I understand that the actual snowiness in here is not going to be the same, but it also... So let me try and trip that off. We also don't have that beautiful detail of the paint or the resin or the colors showing snow. It is just a blob of white right there. Yes, I'm being very picky, but if you're going to pay a lot of money for an artisan, you want it to have the de you, you want to have that level of detail that you're paying for. It's it's just a blob of white there. And there's no there's no dry brushness about it. There's no streakness about it. It doesn't look like natural snowfall that is on the peak of Mount Fuji. At least not to me. Now you know I could I could you know you know. This is exactly what I could do. You'll have to excuse me for going off camera for a moment. I'm rattling around things. Wait, get out of there so I can get hold of you. Apologize for my language. Okay. I've got so much stuff everywhere. I got one of these. What is one of these? Well, it's a loop. It's a little magnifier. Uh, it's one of my wife's that she uses for painting watercolor botanicals so she can get the fine details in the actual botanical items like leaves and flowers and she lent one of them to me so I can have a look at nibs for my fountain pens and uh, <sighs> let's have a look yeah it's pretty much very detailless there is there is kind of there is kind of detail happening here and there was missed opportunity. It's quite thick in in the actual coating, but uh, they could have taken more time and effort to actually apply it 
depending on how they were manufactured, to get a much, much better effect. And well, it's just a little bit disappointing. I mean, it's probably even more disappointing because of the fact that, like, had I paid for this, I would be like, expectation versus reality is just not there. I don't know if that's going to, this would be really cool if it, eh, if it worked. So it's kind of like putting a magnifier glass on it, but like, it's just, there's no, there's no level of detail. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm kind of flogging a dead horse at the moment because I've said it already. And I'm still saying it, but um, yeah, even that bottom snow, it's just laid on, it's just laid on heavy. All right. So let's just ignore the detail part of that. And let's go into fitment. Now underneath it is it's pretty thick. You can see you can see the actual profile there. It's rounded, which is nice. Uh, the actual wall of the keycap is nice and thick, which is really lovely. It's not a very deep stem, so that's just something to be aware of. It may actually cut your travel distance short if for whatever reason you have a, a longer stroke on your keycaps. It is wood. You can definitely see the wood grain on it. It's very nice and smooth and polished at least, so that's something going for it. Uh, not quite sure what's happened on this edge. So you can see how it's that whiter, lighter color. You can see the reflection. So they've actually managed to polish sand away too much resin because the other surfaces, like the resin coating, you can see in the reflection goes all the way down for the most part. See, it's glossy all the way down. And it's kind of gone on two, two edges. They've taken it too off. They've taken it too aggressively. Okay, so let's get the orientation right and let's try the fitment test. So greens, whoa, that's, that's very snug. It's very snug. And it sits very, very high. That sits ridiculously high. Like, you can still see green stem from that switch. There, there's like daylight right there. Um, if I take a row three cap, because a row one cap wouldn't make any difference whatsoever to this. I can't use, well, I kind of can, but I can't all at the same time because this is not an actual MX mount. But let's just take an OEM cap. I'm going to put that OEM cap on it, and I'm going to seat it all the way down. That's the difference in the seating position. The fact that like there's broad daylight under this is actually kind of disappointing. Now these switches pop out because they're just plate mounted. So it's tight enough that the, the green switch comes off with it. But uh, let's see how it goes on this red switch. Is it the green switch? It's not the green switch. Once again, it is seating ridiculously high. Look at that. Is that, is that deliberate? Is that meant to represent the height of the mountain? Is it because it's supposed to be superior? Or did they just simply not cut the cruciform stem deep enough to the inside of this keycap? Wow. Well, that's, that's, uh, that's two strikes. However, what I will say, though, is that at least it does have a snug fit. And after putting it on two keycaps, I don't see any damage to the stem and there's no visible signs of cracking or wearing, which I would not expect to happen anyway on something like this. Um, yeah, so let's try the, the flick test, shall we? So let's just put that back on and let's put it onto a, a black switch. How does it sit on the black switch? And 
once again you're seeing you're seeing daylight you're seeing daylight through that um, it's kind of disappointing let's move that out of the way and So I'm not surprised at all that it hasn't come off because like I said, it's been a very snug fit on both that green and the red switch. It, you know, dislodged that switch a little bit out of the plate just then. But overall, a very nice snug fit. Now I'm not going to put this on a box switch. I'm not going to put on a, on a, on a uh, keycap cracking box switch, which I have heaps of, but um, yeah. It's a little bit unfortunate that it's not deep enough. Rightio. So, in wrapping up, I think the concept was there. I think the concept was quite nice. The, the curvature of the row one is actually slightly off. Uh, it's not... Yeah, that's actually going to bug me now. I need to go and get a row one. can see how I dress very casually. Okay, so this is an SA row one. Right, let's let's, let's go with a, a straight up back to back comparison, shall we? On that. So it's it's kind of hard to see because it's clear, uh, but it's actually it's close, but it's slightly shorter. I was looking at it and I was thinking the angle on this doesn't seem a hundred percent right. Now if I if I butt them up and so their bottoms are touching my thumb, you can see it's like shorter it is distinctly shorter uh, in terms of the the overall curvature and the feel of what a row one feels like there's a divot in here it's like a deeper dish in the middle it's um it's almost like a homing key kind of finger hugging now, i'm not saying that it feels bad but it feels different because it's not present on what you would normally expect on a row one at all. So yeah, that's just something to think about. And in terms of the actual footprint size, so if I line this up against two edges of a standard keycap, it's going to be harder to do than I thought it would be, but it's actually smaller. So there we go. So you'll see, you can actually see green. So the overall keycap width is also smaller than a standard SA keycap. Interesting. I wouldn't have picked it had I not picked this up to actually do that direct comparison with. Would not have picked it. Now, it says it's meant to be 17 millimeters tall. So let's have a look. And it lies. So. Here's an SA keycap, and it measures 17mm, it doesn't even measure 17 mil either. It is about 16. It's about 16 mil. And then if I get this guy and I do the same thing. Yeah, it's, it's like a distinct mill, maybe a mill and a little bit shorter. So, that's it. That's another third strike. Well, not, no, not, a, not another third strike, but that's a third strike against that. So, sizing slightly off, uh, detail slightly off, keycap fitment 
slightly off. Hmm, great concept, just execution was not there. Radio. So, look, it's it's still nice. It's pretty in its own way. Just don't expect very much out of it. Is it worth sixty dollars if that was the actual cost value for one of these? I'm going to say probably not. Um, I don't know how many of these were actually sold or purchased as part of that drop. Okay, it only rates a two and a bit star out of five stars. It's not even a full three stars on their star rating, by the way. So you know, there's 33 reviews against it. There obviously must be some kind of commentary on on people's experiences and the quality of this keycap. But uh, there's not very much else that I can say. There you go. So thank you very much to Mutanale for actually making this review happen. And of course, I also want to thank all of our supporters on Patreon for their continued support in helping our podcast and the costs of running the podcast. And of course, you know, being able to do the things that I do here on this channel with the stuff that I managed to create and buy and, and play around with and stuff like that. Which of course is not to say and take away from anything of our supporters and fans who send me stuff like this keycap to review as well. So really love and appreciate all of it. Now, of course, if you like this review, if you like any of your other videos, our builds, our designs, our content, our podcasts, you know, please hit that like button. Please hit that share button. And if you're new to mechanical keyboards and you've just discovered our channel as well, please hit subscribe. So uh, yeah, you can see more videos, updates, and interesting things about mechanical keyboards from us. So I'm going to leave it there. Once again, thank you for coming along and checking out another video from the Board Podcast. And until next time, happy clacking.